Happy New Year! This is my first recording of 2022. It's going to be a big year, especially for Sinnoh fans. As I record this, I just finished my first playthrough of Pokemon Shining Pearl, which you can catch up with on Twitch or YouTube if you want to. I recently returned from a trip to Hokkaido, the real-life Sinnoh region, and Pokemon Legends Arceus is mere weeks away. We still have a few more Generation 3 Pokemon to cover, but around mid-July we'll be getting into the fourth generation monsters, and I feel like I should be pretty well prepared at this point. I have a few logistical things to figure out. Do I do the new Regis from the Crown Tundra alongside the original three, or when I get to Regigigas? Do I do the Hisuian monsters as bonus episodes when the game launches, or as a mini-series between Gens 3 and 4? Watch this space, I guess. Or get in touch if you have preferences. And thanks for listening through 2021. I hope you'll enjoy yourselves for another year of deep dives into pretend animals from a children's computer game. I'm Luke Summerhays, and I love Baltoy. As long-term listeners may have guessed already, I am a big nerd for Japanese history. One of the unusual things about Japan is that it only developed a written language in the 4th or 5th century AD. This means that everything earlier than that is technically prehistory. There are tens of thousands of years in which the Japanese islands were inhabited by people, about which we only have archaeological evidence. The Kofun period, which immediately preceded recorded history, is so named for the large keyhole-shaped burial chambers it left behind. In these burial chambers were often left haniwa, clay figures which are ubiquitous in Japanese archaeology, and which Western Nintendo fans might recognize as the gyroids from Animal Crossing. For about a millennium before this, Japan was in the so-called Yayoi period, in which people settled and began to farm rice. And for at least 12,000 years before that, the Jomon people lived in Japan, named for their pottery, decorated by wrapping it in strings. Their distinctive decorated pots, when turned upside down, are the basis for the Guardians from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Baltoy is a ground and psychic type Pokemon. A small, vaguely humanoid clay figure with long arms, a round head, it somewhat resembles a Haniwa figure. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green tell us it was discovered in ancient ruins. While moving, it constantly spins. It stands on one foot, even when asleep. While I grew up thinking the gyroids were inexplicable and bizarre, in Japanese pop culture, an animated haunted Haniwa is a standard trope image, like an Egyptian mummy stumbling forwards in Western cartoons and movies. Baltoy tapers into a point at its base in lieu of feet, it spins on the spot like a spinning top. The name Baltoy combines balance and toy, while the Japanese name Yajilon is just an abbreviation of Yajirobe, a type of balancing toy. Pokemon Ruby tells us, Baltoy moves while spinning around on its one foot. Primitive wall paintings depicting this Pokemon living among people were discovered in some ancient ruins. While Pokemon Sword tells us, it moves while spinning around on its single foot. Some Baltoy have been seen spinning on their heads. In archaeology, we can only learn about ancient people through whatever happens to survive. This can be sturdy tools used for hunting and warfare. It may be religious artifacts as they were carefully preserved. And often, it's children's toys, as these can be clumsily discarded and buried for us to rediscover. Clay figurines of people and animals are commonly found among the remains of different civilizations around the world, and spinning tops, being simple to make but delightful to play with, have also been found in the remains of many ancient civilizations. In Japan in particular, a type of competitive spinning top game has been around since at least the Edo period, a kind of ancient predecessor to Beyblades. At level 36, Baltoy grows up but also seems to travel further back into prehistory as it evolves into Claydol. Claydol is a bulky, squat clay man with bulbous, exaggerated eyes 
abstract limbs, and patterns decorating it. While it is far more humanoid than Baltoy, Claydol's eyes do repeat all the way around its head, bringing to mind its predecessors spinning. Pokemon Ruby tells us, Claydol are said to be dolls of mud made by primitive humans and brought to life by exposure to a mysterious ray. This Pokemon moves about while levitating. And Pokemon Sapphire tells us, Claydol is an enigma that appeared from a clay statue made by an ancient civilization dating back 20,000 years. This Pokemon shoots beams from both its hands. The Jomon people, whom I talked about at the start, left countless ceramics behind. While the cooking pots are the most ubiquitous, perhaps the most treasured are the Shakoki Dogu. Dogu are clay figures of worship, often fertility gods and goddesses with exaggerated voluptuous features. The Shikoki Dogu of the Jomon period in particular are decorated with the Jomon's distinctive elaborate designs, leading some to see goggles around the eyes, elaborate costumes, and helmets. These visuals, which are superficially similar to some ancient statues made by Native American peoples or early inhabitants of India, are very popular with so-called ancient astronaut theorists who see them as evidence of extraterrestrial visitors. While ancient alien stuff is pretty fringe, it is popular in Japanese pop culture, where it fits nicely with ancient myths, which often involve mythical figures descending from the stars or returning to the moon. Pokemon Ultra Moon's Pokedex entry leaned into it, telling us, The ancient people who made it apparently modelled it after something that descended from the sky. It fires beams from both arms. The name, Clay Doll, quite literally comes from Clay Doll, but it also rhymes with Dreidel, a type of spinning top used during Hanukkah celebrations in Judaism. The Japanese name is Nendol, combining Nendo, or clay, and Doll. This one also has a little extra third meaning, as Nen means thought in Japanese, and this is, after all, a psychic type. Composer for the show, Jonathan Cromie, got in touch with some thoughts about Baltoy and Claydol. Hi everybody, it's me, Jonathan Cromie. Hope you're enjoying the show. Wanted to talk a bit today about Baltoy and Claydol, um, the uh, the Dogu Pokemon. Not really got much to say about them, I just like them quite a bit. They've got unique type combinations, learn some interesting moves. Uh, you find a lot of Claydols quite late on in Sky Pillar if you're sort of grinding up to try and face Rayquaza with a different layer. With a sensible level team, yeah. So you get to know Claydol quite well, and they're, they're easy. They don't do much damage to you. That's not a very good reason for having an attachment for, for to a Pokemon, is it? I like to beat a lot of them up. Um, but again, Claydol is one of these sort of Pokemon that I sort of felt a little bit sorry for. Um, most of my sort of experience through the competitive scene has been through Smogon, and most of their talk about Claydol seemed to be, "It's too slow." It's a defensive ground type, doesn't have any instant recovery moves, get rid of it. Um, obviously there's no one site for paying attention to sort of competitive Pokemon, and no site can tell you which Pokemon you do and don't love. And I always quite like the Dogu designs, um, from the gyroids in Animal Crossing to uh, Baltoy and Claydol themselves. So yeah, I've got a soft spot for Claydol and its pre-evolution, even if that mostly comes from knocking lots of them out, quote-unquote. That's all from me. Hope you enjoy the rest of the cast. Uh, gyroids are not quite the same as Dogu, but I'll let Jonathan off as I brought them up too. Spinning is not as big a part of Claydol's character as it was Baltoid's, but Rapid Spin was something of a signature move for the Pokemon. In its debut generation, it was a mainstay competitively, thanks to its ability to remove spikes and resist some common attacks. As Jonathan mentioned though, the creep of more powerful Pokemon, along with the physical and special split, meaning there were more super effective moves that could hit its weak physical defense, saw Claydol steadily become less and less useful after that auspicious start. I love visiting old historical sites and museums, and any time I encounter a Dogu statue, I get a little rush of joy and excitement, as I think fondly of Claydol or Shakumon from Digimon. Lovely stuff. 
Music for Luke Loves Pokemon was composed by Jonathan Cromie. Artwork for the show is by Katie Groves. Writing, producing, and editing is all by me, Luke Summerhays. While funding is provided by lovely listeners over at patreon.com slash podcastiopodcastius, where you can also find links to the other shows my friends and I create. I love to hear from listeners with your thoughts and feelings about the Pokemon you love too. Get in touch about the next monsters, Lilip and Anorith, or with your thoughts, feelings, and observations about any other Pokemon over on Twitter or Facebook at LukeLovesPKMN. And if you want to hear me bang on about Pokemon and other Nintendo games even more, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash LukeLovesPKMN. I love Baltoy. And remember, I love you too. <laughs>